Hey, welcome to a video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a UK antiques dealer and reseller. I buy and sell weird, wonderful and interesting items in the hope to flip them for a profit. Now, you won't find me on eBay. Everything I sell is on my own website, antiquesarena.com. Today, I'm going to share a video with you, some of the things I've sold, uh, what I've, the price I've achieved and talk a little bit about the items. You'll have to forgive the background. Children are off school holidays, so I'm filming in the bedroom. <laughs> so, shall we get started? Purpose of my videos when I share what I've sold is not to brag and say, oh, look what I've managed to do. It's to, if you can see some of the things I've sold when you're out and about in the wild, at car boot sales, charity shops, you might go, he sold one of them for so much money and they're only asking a pound or two, so you buy it and then you sell it yourself. We've all got the same worldwide market. So if I can sell it, you can sell it. And that's why I make my sold videos, in the hope to show what type of thing is selling at the moment and maybe someone else can make a bit of money if they find one. So let's take a look at the items. Okay, the first item we're going to look at today is a beautiful Russian, I believe it's Lomansov porcelain figure of a husky and an Eskimo. Beautiful thing, about five inches tall and absolutely beautiful. I believe these are hand painted, but a nice bit of USSR, USSR porcelain. Really nice little item there. There's the mark for USSR. Now I'm going to share with you in just a moment how to date these marks and examples of the marks for Lomonsov porcelain. A beautiful figure. Now, I achieved £45 for this. I believe it was something like a fiver I paid. I can't remember. It was a while back. Um, as you know, I'm working through my old sales until I catch up to the modern time. So I'm not 100% on what I paid for it, but I think it was around a fiver. And you will find USSR pieces relatively cheap at charity shops and car boot sales. Okay, so if you come to the oldstuff.com, they have a section on pottery and porcelain marks, Lomonsov marks. Now, the Imperial Porcelain Factory was established in 1744, um, commonly referred to as Lomonsov Porcelain Factory in 1925, was given the name of the Russian Academy uh, Science Founder, became known as Lomonsov Porcelain Factory, okay. Anyway, some examples. Now, I don't, I struggle to distinguish the difference between these two marks, and I've had them open this morning, looking at them. And the writing seems very similar. There's not a lot of difference in the marks. However, the piece I have is 1986 to 1992. That's the Eskimo. However, it's a very similar mark for the 1936 to 1992 period. But you have them here in blue. You have them here with a stamp made in Russia. Depending on what the stamp is, obviously changes the date. And you can have them in another language as well. You come down here, St. Petersburg, got Russia. So there's some examples of the marks for USSR. Now, I've had Lomonosov and Russian porcelain sell for a few hundred pounds. So it is really, really collectible stuff. Um, I've got a couple of pieces currently on the website of Lomonosov or Russian porcelain, uh, from bulldogs to figures and some of it's relatively cheap, you know, 30, 40 pounds uh, up, but it's very collectible porcelain. So if you see it, USSR, sometimes you'll only see half a mark or that's that top piece of the mark. Just buy it. Okay, the next piece uh, I'm going to look at here is absolutely stunning. It is sterling silver and it has inlaid coral and turquoise stones. Um... Now, it's, it's only small, it'll fit a, like a 14-inch neck, and I think the clasp has been altered at the top. Um, I've since selling this, I've actually seen similar examples, <clears throat> and they've had like a, a letter S type loop system at the top for closing. Uh, so I think the clasp has been replaced. However, the other ones I've seen have been sold as American Indian. 
Um, and they've been selling for 200, 300. So I've undersold this at 75 pound. But at the same time, it only came in for probably a fiver or tenner, somewhere on by there. And as you can see, the turquoise does have a couple of cracks, as does the coral. But what a beautiful, beautiful necklace. These weren't hollow. They were solid cast silver. Really, really nice. Good weight on it. And it just had a stunning look. I know it's stamped 925 on the uh, clasp. But I do think the, clasps are, the clasp has been changed. But a really, really nice, good-looking piece of silver jewellery. Next piece we have is a bit of a shocker, to be honest with you. £125 for an ambulance long service and good conduct medal. Now, you see these at car boot sales, you think, okay, it's a £10 medal, £15 medal. And I probably only paid a fiver, give or take, for this medal. Um, however, when I come home and searched it up, the ambulance service medal was quite a rare one. They sell reproductions of this medal for £20, £30. Pounds. Uh, so I could have made a profit had it been a reproduction. But the fact it was an original ambulance service medal, £125, and that was probably half of what they were selling for on Google at the time. This didn't stick around long. I put it up for sale and I was contacted by a gentleman who actually had lost his medal and wanted an original one to replace his. Now you can see I didn't even turn the photograph, so I must have been lazy or forgotten to go back. Um, really nice medal in mint condition. It hadn't been out of his box. However, it was engraved with somebody's name, whoever it was awarded to, E.J. Dias. Anyway, the person who bought this off me was going to polish this off or have it polished off by a jeweller and have their own name re-engraved into it because they'd lost theirs and they wanted a replacement. They didn't want a reproduction one. They wanted an original. £125 for a long service and good conduct medal, ambulance service. You wouldn't have thought that, would you? This piece is quite apt for the time of year we're coming into. This is a two-tier cake stand produced by Wedgwood in pottery with the Christmas pattern. Uh, it's the Queensway, I believe Queensway, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's the Queensway um, Christmas pattern. By Wedgwood, absolutely stunning thing. Now, I had the cups and saucers to match this, and I achieved around a similar price, £40, £45 for the cups and saucers, something like that. It's in good condition. It's not a second. It's in really good condition. It's a beautiful thing. Um, I achieved £45 for it. There it is. Wedgwood, Queensway, Christmas time, made in England, 1994. So it does have some age. But a really nice thing. Ten and a half inches in diameter, nine and a half inches tall, and they achieve forty-five pounds. Now, I always buy stife if I see stife. And how do you know it's stife? Well, the simplest way is the button and tag in the ear. Sometimes it'll just have a button. Sometimes it will just have a hole in the ear where the button was. Ear, ear. Anyway, recently there were two stife teddy bears. Bought in Monmouthshire car boot sale for about a hundred pound, give or take. I don't know the exact figures, um, and they sold in Hanson's auctions for thousands. And that was by a car booter going around buying his stuff. I did actually mention it and show the in the blogs the full prices that they paid and achieved, and they actually made the uh, the Welsh newspapers. That's how good a find they were because they were expected to go into the high thousands. I think they pulled two or three thousand, I can't quite remember off the top of my head, for a stife teddy bear, but not bad for a stife teddy bear off a boot sale, is it? This is a relatively modern one, it's probably 1990s, and we have a little cat. It's only a small one, but a beautiful little cat. And I always buy stife, they're German teddy bears, and well, what can I say? I think it was Margaret Stife created her first. Anyway, uh, £30 achieved for a relatively modern Stife cat, but a beautiful cat nonetheless. And Stife is, well, let's be honest, if you're going to buy teddy bears, there's no better name than Stife. It's like buying Tiffany and jewellery. Next piece we have is a bit of Spanish porcelain. Now, this is Neo by Ladro. There's a difference of Ladro and Neo. They're the same company. One is by the... Students or the uh, 
newer artists and the lad rose by the accomplished or the masters the artists this is a figurine with a parasol there will be a proper title for it i don't know what it is and there's like mold numbers underneath them but nevertheless if you went back 15 20 years Neo and Ladro were literally the hottest ticket. Everybody wanted it. I even had shelves of it myself in the house. But you can see this is Neo by Ladro rather than Ladro. I'll show you the difference in the marks in just a moment. I'm sure I should have a mark. Oh, I've not done the mark because I had the box. Uh, normally I would do the underside showing you the mark as well because they have impressed marks on the base as well. Now, if I come over here there's a, and zoom in here, there's a few examples of Neo Marks, uh, Neo by Ladro. But then if you come down here, there's a couple of examples. There's a Ladro Mark there, there's a Ladro Mark there. There's an example of the impressed mark there. That one is 7612, and that will relate to the mold or pattern number of the figure. The Ladro pulls two, three, four times the price of Neo. There is a huge difference between if you have two figures, you may have a 10, 15, 20 pound figure in uh, Neo, but it could be a 7,500 pound figure in Ladro. That is the difference. Would you believe you can buy something or sell something that's been sold through IKEA for good money? Well, IKEA bought a run in the 90s of bronzes. Now, this bronze, and if you look at them, there's almost no cast into them. These are the sort of, it's like an abstract art. Um, they're not actually supposed to resemble real life. They are abstract. Yeah. Beautiful bronze designed by Lewis Henderstrom. Um, signed there as well. And sold through Ikea. It's mid-century, if you like. Well, it's not quite mid-century, is it? But uh, they sell them as mid-century. It's sort of last quarter. But either way, they sell them as that mid-century modern look to them. And £40 I achieved for that. And I can tell you now, I paid about 6 or £7 for that from Splot. They don't have a lot of detail. They don't have a lot of quality. It is all about the abstract art, the design, and how they look at a distance in the room i i don't understand that type of art myself but it sells so i buy it and they were bronze and they were swedish okay this next piece i've uh, got is a tibetan offering bowl so you have a wood bowl in this case covered in copper i have got some of these covered in silver as well so they're basically offering bowls or ceremonial bowls this one, as I said, is covered in copper. But look at the way the copper has been worked. It is absolutely beautiful. I don't think I got a better photo of it. Look at that. Absolutely stunning, the, the work in the copper. Really, really nice. If you wanted to clean it, it would absolutely glow. It really would. Stunning. Looking at that, it may have been silver plated at some point in its life. Um, either way, absolutely gorgeous. Don't know what the number relates to. 188, but they'll know what it means. I don't. But a really nice Tibetan offering bowl, ceremonial bowl, and I sold it for £25. I think I undersold it because I sold it within about four or five days of listing it. So, yeah, methinks I undersold that one. Only a small bowl, mind, five inches in diameter, two and a half inches deep. This next piece I sold, <laughs> I sell a lot of them. They don't really do a lot for me. It's, this one is a Coport porcelain, or bone china rather, figurine entitled Four Seasons Summer. She's eight and a half inches tall. I achieved £55 for her. They've got to be pretty special to be at 50, £55. Uh, this, there you go. This one was a limited edition run of only 2000 um, The average price I achieved for Coport figurines is like £30, £40 for the public and 20 25 for trade but if they're a limited edition that are demanding 100 pound online then i'll sort of come in at 60s and 70s or 50s and wait for an offer um but i, I always do check the sold prices and I, to be honest with you sometimes i'll come in at half the sold prices i make sure that i leave a good profit on it for the next dealer so if i sold out of 55 you can pretty much guarantee they were selling for 85 95 pound 
but I can also guarantee you I didn't pay more than a tenner for her. I pick up Coalport and Royal Dalton figurines all the time, ranging from £2 to a tenner. And I see them quite regular. So, Coalport figurines, Royal Dalton figurines, they're boring as hell, but they sell. Now, this is absolutely gorgeous. You have an early 19th century lemon squeezer foot engraved rummer. Now, if you don't know what a lemon squeezer foot is, I'm going to show you now. That is a lemon squeezer foot. Literally looks like they've plunged a piece of glass onto a lemon squeezer. And that is exactly how they make them. And then the bowl is beautifully engraved. Absolutely stunning thing. Let me share the photos with you. Absolutely love this. I, I People collect rummers and glasses just for the feet. There will be someone out there who would have collected this just for the lemon squeezer foot because that is all they collect. There'll be others who collect it because it's a rummer and they only collect rummers and so forth. But it's a beautiful thing nonetheless. Really nice early 19th century lemon squeezer foot rummer. There's a fabulous image of the underside of the lemon squeezer there. Basically, you know what a lemon squeezer is. It's just the indentation that you'd get from one of them. That's why they call that. But a beautiful glass nonetheless. Uh, I sold this one for £75. Now, if anybody's interested in drinking glasses, as I've explained before, I buy a lot of drinking glasses at car boot sales, 50p a pound, £2, £5. You'll all, every time you go to a car boot sale or charity shop, there will always be a shelf full of old glasses. And nobody seems to know how to identify early drinking glasses. And pretty much any time somebody passes away, their house gets emptied into a charity box or into a car boot sale box, and the family have no clue what's in there. It's just all glasses that go to a car boot sale. So when you find them in the car boot sale in boxes of junk glass, you'll find them for 50p in a pound. And some sell for hundreds. Well, in order to help you identify them, I've done a series of videos on YouTube. So the first one there, number one, is the guide to antique drinking glasses, which is a general video talking about how you identify them. Then you come down here to number two, and I talk about all the different feet uh, from the heavy bluster period all the way through the 18th century into the Victorian time. Uh, then I talk about the different stems and things like that, so you can identify a glass from the foot and the stem. Then you come down here, and I even do book reviews on what books to look for um, and talk about tips and secrets and things to help you identify the drinking glasses. And I've started now adding in holes where any hall where I've bought 18th century drinking glasses, as I redo my videos and playlists, I'm going to add in the hall videos so you can see that you can find them for 50p as well. But if you want to learn drinking glasses, Honestly, go and watch these videos. Um, you won't get a better guide to 18th century drinking glasses on the internet. One of my biggest earners since I started doing antiques 20, 25 years ago has been antique drinking glasses. <clears throat> whether they be 18th century Georgian, whether they be early Victorian or even Edwardian, I do a lot with drinking glasses. And when you can pick a drinking glass up in a box on the floor for 50p, and the minimum you're going to get from 18th century glass is 30, 40 pound. So you're instantly turning 50 pence into 30, 40 pound, and it is an easy sell. I talked to you in those videos about folded feet, pontal marks, everything, you name it, striations. I talk about it all. If you want to learn drinking glasses, go and watch them videos, because I can tell you now, as soon as you go out to car boot sales, give it half a dozen car boot sales, you're going to find a Georgian drinking glass. I tell you now. I'm not confident in the videos. So, yeah. And they are really, really profitable. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, go check out my website, antiquesarena.com. I've got 4,000 items listed on there. Multiple blogs. Um, check out my YouTube channel for loads of tutorial videos, haul videos, showcase videos, you name it. i got videos for everything. There's 1,000 videos on there. The amount of tips and secrets I've shared in that thousand videos is unbelievable. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'd appreciate it if you could share my videos, like the videos, comment. It helps the algorithm to pick up my channel and helps me keep creating content for you. Thank you. Happy hunting and I'll see you soon.